it was it was hard, but then it was easy at the same time. I mean, you know, most people wouldn't want to go out and have a 30, a 40, or 50-minute match with Dusty because it was difficult to work with it sometimes because it was just, it was, it was just, you worked. And it wasn't like, oh, yeah, just go out there and have a match. When you worked with Dusty, you worked. And, and you worked every single night to get every ounce of energy. Because look at, look at what we were having to follow. Like if, if we were on a typical card, we followed probably Midnight Express against Rock and Roll Express. And then we would have like Tully against um, Dusty. And then you had Flair against Magnum or something in the main event. Now, how are you, you – you've got to give everything. Otherwise, people aren't going to remember you. And you know what? People remembered every single match on that card, and that's a testament to Dusty. But then it's also a testament to everybody that was on the card. But no one went out of that arena going, oh, you know, I'm never going to go to wrestling again. They couldn't wait until next month to spend their, you know, $10, $20 to come see us again. And that, you know, that's a testament right there Dusty had everyone working with the best person that they could work with to bring out cards, and people remember us 30 years later, you know, and, and really have nothing bad about anything to say about us. Looking back, do you think that was quite possibly the best talent roster? We're talking about Midnight Express, Rock and Roll Express, The Horseman, Dusty. Possibly the best talent roster of all time? I don't know of all time, but for that time, yeah. I mean, it, it was, I mean, if you can, and no disrespect to any of the guys, but if you can make meaningful matches with, like, Jimmy Valiant and Paul Jones and Shaska Watley and the hair thing and and just draw that out and bring Big Mama in and, and the whole you know, scenario of that, and then, you know, having Jimmy Garvin and Patty and, and their whole scenario with that, and it's just, oh, my gosh, there, there's no one bad that you can say that, oh, yeah, they, that, why did they have them working on there? It all keyed in, and it all worked, and it was all, there wasn't a match that you, that you could go, oh, I'm going to go to the concession on this match. When you looked at all the cards, like, you know, how they have, like, 30 years to go today or, you know, whatever on the on Facebook, and they do, like, the old wrestling cards, and you look at the old Mid-Atlantic cards from, you know, like, 1984 to, you know, like, 1989, 1990, something like that, there's not a match on there that you'd want to go get something at the concession. You know, you want to see every match, and, and it's not like that now. It's just, it's so different, and, and it's, I'm not dissing, you know, what's happening today, but it was it was just a cool time in wrestling. Unbelievable, especially looking back. It's like, man, these guys are so talented, and like so many things stick out. But obviously, you know, the Dusty view with Tully and you kind of being in the middle, that stands out. But also, Magnum TA and, and Tully, and what a few they had. And we had a chance to interview both guys and kind of, you know, get both of their perspectives and, and how much they really, you know, didn't like each other. Maybe even today kind of don't really like each other. But what was your kind of sense of being kind of in the middle of that crazy feud? It was very touchy because, you know, like even having a kiss with Magnum and then we went in and had, in, you know, like with Starcade and had the cage match and the whole thing. Whenever they had matches, they actually were so physical. They, they were beating the crap out of each other because they, they literally couldn't stand each other. And, and it was like you had these two big alpha males in this wrestling office that were trying to be number one. And you've got Magnum that's always with Dusty and then Tully who's trying to be the best he can be for Dusty but then doesn't want to be the yes man or like, oh, yes, Dusty, whatever you want. Tully's going to be whoever Tully's going to be. And so you got kind of that conflict of like the good son and the bad son and, you know, both going for the, the rival number one position. Plus then they want to have the number one spot on the card too. So they're just, and they're, neither one is going to back down on each other. And, Whenever you watch the promo of where your uh, Magnum grabs me and gives me the kiss, and then Tully comes out, and they're hitting on each other, you actually 
feel how physical each one of those punches are. You can because they're literally knocking the crap out of each other just to, for the build up of Starcade. And then once even that they had Starcade, it almost had to end at that time because they one of them was going to kill the other one. It was just that that vicious. And what else were they going to do after that? And then Magnum started his deal with Nikita, I believe, after that. But even after that, it's kind of strange because Tully was married and, and had his wife, and then Magnum ended up marrying Tully's ex-wife, and they've got kids, and Tully's got kids with her. And I guess everybody's like, it's a big, happy family now, but oh, my Lord, you know. it's uh, Their history has been intertwined now for the last 30-some years, whether in or out of the ring. I mean, now they've got kids and ex-wives together. It's really crazy how real it was back then, but even you're like you're right, even today it's so real because of the relationship and how you know Magnum is you know, actually married to uh, Tully's ex-wife and you know the kids and everything. So it, it is it is really crazy. And then you think about an even another kind of addition to you with with that feud is when basically Tully slaps you or hits you and, and kind of uh, takes you out of the game a little bit because you didn't help him with Magnum. Do you like, you know, did you like kind of turning baby face at that point? Well, it was it was strange at that time because if I remember right, they were actually going to put me with Buddy Landell at that time. But Landell, through his addiction, had disappeared from TV and actually had disappeared for a couple of days. And so Dusty had it worked out where I was, and now this it may be totally wrong and I'm not remembering this right, but I remember that I was supposed to go with Buddy. We were supposed to work a program against Flair at the time, but then Buddy, through his addictions, didn't show up for TV, didn't show up for a couple of the house shows, so they went ahead and fired him. Well, they didn't know what they were going to do with me because really, Tully and I, we had so much heat, there was no more, I mean, what else could we do? So then at that point, Dusty did the complete 180, and instead of just keeping me with another heel, he put me with him and then we did the baby face run which to me it just rejuvenated Dusty a hundred percent and it was it was so fun working with him and I just I just miss him to pieces and I was so fortunate this past summer that um, I actually got to speak with his wife and she was at uh, one of the fan fests with me and and uh, just I have so much respect for him, and I have so much respect for her, and and I just miss him to pieces, and and it's just not the same going and doing these shows, knowing that I'm just never going to see him again. Definitely, you know, came out of nowhere as a surprise. Crazy, he meant so much to so many people, and he was such an integral part of your career as well. And obviously, you know, we, we kind of mentioned before, you got to spend some time teaming with him. Did you prefer playing a face, or did you prefer the role of playing a heel? Oh, my Lord. Um, I really like being a heel. I mean, I just, I'm kind of the, you know, the, I've heard the term natural heel, and, and I guess, that, you know, that that's in a sense. But I just have that natural look of, like, it's, it's hard for me to be mean and nasty, but when I am, it's very easy for me to be. You're a heel in real life. 